slavery growth in the South during the 1700s. The beginning of slavery in the South. The institution of slavery in America's southern states was based primarily on economics rather than some inherent adoration of the practice itself. By the early 1700s, the southern legislatures began to pass laws restricting the rights of Africans. Southerners began to think of Africans as property. Beginning of Slavery in the South When the Mason-Dixon line was created in the 1760s, Eli Whitney's revolutionary cotton gin, which would eventually solidify slavery in the South, had not yet been created. The Mason-Dixon line symbolizes a cultural boundary between the northeastern United States and the southern United States. Still, despite this fact, there were lines being drawn between the more industrial-based economy of the North and the agricultural economy of the South. Slavery formed the backbone of the South economically, and as it became more widespread after Whitney's invention, it became just as much the po political and social basis of Southern identity as well. Slave Trade Slaves in the early 1700s were traded for molasses in the South, a simple product that had more meaning than an individual. Slavery was therefore considered an essential ingredient in the successful establishment of cash crop plantations in South Carolina. The End of the 1700s By the end of the 1700s, the land planted with tobacco was worn out from too much planting. Some farmers moved to more fertile land in Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, and Mississippi. Other farmers stayed and began to plant crops such as corn and wheat. These crops did not require as much work as tobacco, so the owners of the plantations began to sell their slaves. Importance of Slavery Cheap free labor was the only way of producing cotton and lots of it. Following the invention of the cotton gin, cotton became king in the South comprising a majority of its exports. Without slavery, cotton could not be harvested, and the large plantation holders would surely be in ruins. Though the owners of huge plantations did not amass to a majority in the South, they were the political leaders and drove the economy. For the economic and political success of both the South and the plantation owners, the institution of slavery had to continue.